Okay, so welcome to today's webinar. Fantastic to have you all along. Great to see uh, widespread rain across the country. Um, certainly in some areas that have needed on the East Coast where we've had our worst drought forever, um, which is just fantastic. So today is really about setting up for a great 2020. And I think, um, you know, a lot of my clients had a 2019. There were lots of issues and lots of challenges there that I'm sure they would uh, they would like to not, not, have, not have had to have gone through. Um, it just seemed to be a difficult year for lots lots of businesses. Um, still plenty of businesses making making good money and profitable, but um, I think a lot of people were looking for, you know, for 2020 to be something different. Although with the fires around and stuff uh, over, over the Christmas break, maybe we didn't get the start to 2020 that we would like. All the same though, I think it's worthwhile that we, that we stop, prop, and just take a few minutes to think about setting up for a great 2020. Rather than just sort of launching into... Um, into the new year, I'm, I'm going to encourage you to just take a minute to stop, think about think about your business, be a bit strategic about where you're going and what you're doing, and um, and then make some some great decisions. So I got sort of five tips, but um, here's sort of the agenda for today. So we're going to talk a bit about the the changing environment that that, that we're in. We'll talk about that in a second. We're going to review the now for your business, um, you know, and um, and for me, the now is important that we just stop and take it, take a second around what's happening in the business. We're going to talk about how we understand what's happening in our industry, what's happening now and what's happening in the future and what some of the trends might be. We're going to talk about innovative strategies, how you build some innovative strategies for the future, then plug it into a clear plan. And then importantly, let's not, let's not overlook the personal um, issue in all this um, because I'm finding there's lots of people who are just simply uh, focusing on the business and forgetting about um, themselves and the welfare of their, their people um, as we as we push even harder. Um, and then we'll talk a bit about next steps where you can go for help and the th sort of things we, we can do from there. All right, so the, the changing business environment. Um, I don't know about you, but I'm finding that the pace of change is accelerating rapidly. Um, we're seeing enormous enormous changes. Um, the technological change is coming so fast that people's heads are going to, going to spin. Um, so there's a lot going on in the business. We're seeing more competition. We're seeing globalization. We're seeing changing in retail models, um, things that are happening in a very short space of time. So, so previously we're seeing things that would have taken 30 years to change and now taking two or three years and even sooner to change. Um, you just look at the, you know, the changes in technology and how people are leveraging that, that technology. And I think it's worthwhile just, just stopping to think about that for a second and saying, we're in this rapidly changing environment. What are we going to do about it? Because it's easy to get caught up in the hype and it's easy to get caught up in, I guess, um, you know, getting all excited about things that, that may or may not be happening. Um, and, um, and there's a lot of misinformation out there. So I think it's worthwhile just to, just to, you know, stop and prop and think and think of things. Um, take the time to just objectively sit back and, re and review some things. Um, so let's talk about the now. First time, you know, the first thing is I really want you to just take the time to evaluate where you are, where you are now. And, um, and I think that's, that's absolutely critical. And I think my big tip here is be objective and realistic and don't discount the bad news. You know, I call it head in the sand syndrome. So we want to make sure that we're not just sticking our, our head in the sand um, and saying, oh yeah, that won't happen to me. All right. Because, you know, there's too many um, people who are um, who are discounting that. Um, I'll give you an example. A few years ago, I ran a, a webinar in the horticulture sector on five major trends. One of those major trends is is robotics, um, and and people said to me uh, after that webinar, in the comment section came back and said to me, "Think think you're crazy. Uh, we will never see robotics um, in our industry in my lifetime." And I had to go back to those people and say, "You're actually wrong because you could commercially buy robots now." And since that time, we can we can actually buy some of the stuff that was that was George Jetson Space Age stuff. It's actually um, you know wearable. Uh, robots and all that sort of stuff is actually currently available. So it's gone from being a a thing of um, well, there was only military experiments to now being commercially available, uh, and you can purchase it for all up cost of about fifteen thousand US. So so affordable and reasonable, and these things are coming very rapidly. So so don't stick your head in the sand and say it won't happen to me and it can't happen to us. But at the same time, be objective about the bad news. So in the accounting industry, you know, all the naysayers are out there saying that accountants, you know, are going to disappear and we won't need accountants because, you know, Siri will be able to do our tax fairly soon. That might be true for things 
things like I returns and stuff if you're just doing salary and wages. But if you're a business owner, then I don't know about you, but I'm not going to trust Siri to do my do do my tax for quite a while. So I think um, I, I think we can. There's a naysayers out there, but it's about being objective about it and saying, okay, what's the real likelihood of this? And don't get caught up in the hype around stuff. Understand your numbers, I think, is really important. Um, probably the biggest thing I've, I find is that that people just don't take the time to sit down and analyse their business and pull it apart. So if you've got some skills in that area, just take the time to sit down and pull it apart. Get some some insights into some of the numbers that, that you should be looking at and why you should be looking at and understand the key drivers in your business. Great opportunity to sit down with your accountant and do this. And going into the, into the new calendar year, sit down and say, well, where are we at and how have we gone for the last 12 or 18 months and what's the trends look like and, and those sorts of things. So you know, a trusted business advisor could do the same thing. So make sure you're really understanding your numbers and, and we're really clear on, on what they mean and what the important numbers um, for you are. The other thing when analysing that now, there's some some simple diagnostic tools. There's a couple on my on my website that are free, so you can go to the Shift website and look under free resources, and you'll see there's a, a business diagnostic tool. Well, you can plug into that that business diagnostic tool, answer 25 questions that don't give away any commercially sensitive information, and get some feedback on the areas where you need to focus in your business. Completely free, confidential. Only you and I see that see, see the results. I'm happy to give you some feedback and where you can go for help. Um, we've got a lot of free resources on my site that are going to help, help you out. So do that. We've also got a change success one. So if you've undertaken a major change project in the last year and you're unsure of, of, of why it hasn't performed as well, well as it could have or you're, you're proposing a major change process in the year coming up, then look at our change success diagnostic. Um, that's for business issues. There's also a personal change success diagnostic. So if you're just not getting traction within yourself um, and doing some of the things that you want to do, have a look at the personal change success diagnostic because it'll give you some insights into some of the things that you can work on as an individual to help you take your business to that next level. Um, get a detailed business review. So, so I, um, I miss, um, we do a lot of these business reviews, um, you know, in the, um, in the early nineties when uh, I really started doing this sort of consulting work, um, you know, 30 years ago, I have to say that quickly. Um, we used to do lots of business reviews for people and uh, we tend to slide away from them, but um, you can get it, you know, it's a reasonably cost effective exercise to get somebody to come down and just have an objective look at, look at your business. Just, just be recognized that for lots of people to do that, they're just going to come in and ask you lots of questions and ask your team lots of questions and collate those and pull them together because there's only so many things you can see, you know, externally from a business without, without really understanding the detail and the nuance. And it's fairly um, arrogant of somebody to stroll in and tell you all the things that are wrong with your business without actually really, really spending a lot of time in it. So, so use it as the tool that it is rather than the be all and end all. Um, but sometimes it can give you some insights into things. So, you know, again, just, just think about the now and where, and where you're heading. Um, and then the last thing you can do is, you know, ask your partners and or your team and, um, and a really simple exercise, which I did with a client last week is if you had a magic wand with no limitations, what changes would you make to your business or your industry? All right, so so it's a really simple question. So if you had a magic wand, what what limitation with no limitations? Sorry, what changes would you make? And here's some examples of, of some of the ones up uh, that might come up here. But get people to be really objective and put in everything from you know a new CEO or new owners to you know um, to uh, a new coffee machine and um, just get some insights into them. Now the the thing with magic wand is just to remember that it's not really about where you want to go. It's actually about what the issues are now. So it's very much a now tool. So if you look at you know this example here, um, you know, but double our sales, it, it tells me that sales aren't enough. Yeah. That that sales are are significantly less than where they need to be. You know, um, innovative incentive program for the sales team. That tells me that there's no sales, there's no um, incentive program or not an effective program that's working for the sales team. Yeah, you know, no bad debts. You know, it tells me we've got bad debts. It tells me we've got poor quality customers. So just look at the flip side of these things. A really simple tool to use, and um, and just ask that question. You'll be stunned at the answers that you get from your from your business partners and all your team. Okay, so that's looking at the now. So that's really just pulling that together and look at the now. Now, a component of looking at the now is to think about what's actually happening in your industry. And too often I meet people and go, oh, yeah, yeah, I'm, you know, I know everything that's happening in my industry. And when we get into it, there's a whole heap of stuff that they miss. Um, 
And the reason that is, is because it's really easy to, to get caught up in it and, um, and not stop and prop and have a look at what's really going on in your industry. What, what's happening with the movers and shakers, what consolidations there are, those sort of things. Um, Michael Porter's work on five forces is, is a bit complex, but it's a simple model for analyzing what's going on. I've got another simple model here. I guess my tip here is to be a bit, be a bit visionary and not necessarily a naysayer. So, so think about the immediate issues for your industry and what's going on, but also the future in um, issues that will impact your industry, your business in the next the three in the next three to five years. Take the time, watch some TED talks, look at some YouTube clips. The other place that's really useful to go to is SlideShare, um, which is uh, where people share their PowerPoint presentations. Um, and uh, you could you know you'll see my, some of my presentations up up there. Go there and just look at look. At, Type in some search stuff around your industry and just see what people are putting up because you'll find there's some some really innovative stuff. And what we want to be looking for is people who are who are being disruption or talking about disruption and change in your industry and what's coming. Um, and the reason for that is the the pace of change is far quicker than you think, and some of this change is going to come very very rapidly. And if you're not um, looking at it, then um, then looking for it. So I guess you could be in trouble. Um, the ex CEO of Facebook in Australia, whose name escapes him right this second, I apologize. Um, at a recent conference, I went to, um, talked about how some of this change is coming. as like a tsunami wave. Um, and the problem with the tsunami wave is by the time you see it, it's too late. Um, he said, so what you've got to be looking for is the ripples out deep out to sea that, that indicate that as that a tsunami is on its way, um, and start thinking about it well before it gets there because by the time it gets there, it's often way too late. This is a really simple model that I like to look at, looking at, at our industry and what's going on around our, our business. And it's called, it's called a business environmental analysis and it's really in, um, really simple. If you just think about, you know, your business as it drops into the our industry area, if you think about it and go, okay, so what changes are happening? So what are the fundamental changes that are happening to um, our suppliers? Um, you know, consolidations, mergers, trends in that in that part. So people who supply us, and it's the big group of suppliers that supply you. Um, then what's happening in our industry? What's actually happening in our industry? What are what are the real things? You know, again, consolidation, mergers, you know, disruption, all that sort of stuff fits in there. The channels and the direct customers. So our channels to market or our direct customers. What's happening to them? What's happening around those? So if you sell a product you know, through Woolworths and Coles, that's where Woolies and Coles fit in. Yeah. Um, but you know, you may be a wholesaler and have some retail, you may sell to wholesale clients. Well, what's going on with those channels? Um, and what's going on with those clients? So I understand that. And then the last one is then the consumer. So what's happening with the people who actually use our products and services. And some of you may not have channels. That's okay. Um, but it could be channels to market. You may be delivering the product in different ways and forms, or there may be opportunities to do that. So just use that simple analysis. You just want to write some simple dot points in each of them and then think about them and say, what impact will, should this have on our planning? All right. So if I'm going to pull a plan together, what impact should this have on our plan? Okay. So that's, that's really understand our, our industry. My third tip is, is start thinking about innovative strategies. Um, I, I guess this is, this is a, a personal thing that I find that too many businesses are, uh, a copycat businesses. I used to call them me too businesses, but that's just wrong now. Um, so too many businesses are copycat businesses. So we simply set up a business exactly like the competition, you know? So if everybody else, this is the services they offer. This is the, the way we charge for our services. These are the services we deliver, all that sort of stuff. And then we wonder why we've got lots of, lots of competition and why there's lots of price pressure because we're not taking the time to differentiate our business and think differently about it, about our business. Yeah. And, and quite often it's, it's, you know, when you, when you look at it, you just go, it's just crazy. We, we don't have an understanding of our target market. We don't have an understanding of, of um, products and services. We're just not thinking about things in, in a different way. So a good place to start with that, with this is to actually go to, to this, you know, and understand what's happening with your clients. And then you may think there could be some different ways mm -hmm. of approaching the service offering that your product offering that you're making to those clients. And this is the avatar model. Yeah. Um, there are videos on, um, on the shift website on how to fill out this, how to fill out this template. But basically what, what you're really interested in are what are the frustrations? What are the major frustrations of your clients? 
or your customers? What are their key frustrations? And it might be in relation to your product or service, but it could be generally. Um, and therefore, and then what are their fears? What are their major fears that drop out of that? Similarly, then, what are their wants? You know, and the wants won't necessarily be just a flip of their frustrations. You know, it will be. It could be slightly different stuff. But what they really want, um, you know, think of three or four points there. And what do they really aspire to? You know? So think through through those things. So you've got a, a clear picture of what your client base needs because then you can start to be innovative and say, well, if that's what their key frustrations are and that's what they really fear, then how can we help them get that? Or this is what they really want, then how could we help to deliver that? How could we pay you part of the delivery process that, that gets in there? So start with your clients. Um, all good marketing starts with understanding your, your, your avatar. If your target market is upright with a pulse and a wallet, then you're too broad, right? It's just way, way too broad. You want to tighten it right up because then you can get your, your product strategy right, your business strategy right, your marketing messages right, okay? It's a really important place to start. If you're really struggling with with innovation, how to be a little bit um, innovative, then then use the seven R's. And again, there's a blog article and a video on the Shift website that steps you through the seven R's. But they're just different frameworks to think about a particular problem or a particular issue or your business in and say, right, how do we rethink things? How can we reconfigure, re resequence, relocate, reduce? their input or our reliance on something, reassign productivity or production somewhere else or retool to get the job done in a different way. And um, it's really quite um, uh, an exciting process to sit down and say, right, let's, let's just run these seven, these seven, I guess, frameworks over a particular issue and see what drops out for us. And if you run them over your business, it's even better. Yeah. So, you know, if you're stuck on how to be innovative, I'm not a very innovative person, then, then think about that. And then the last one then is, is when you are, you know, looking at, at, at how you could be innovative in your business and change things, and you might be looking around the marketplace and other businesses, just don't look at whole businesses, right? Look at the various components of your business. And for example, there, if you've got a bricks and mortar business supported by an online business, then and, and the online business is where the growth is going to come from, then look at what the leaders in online are doing, irrespective of what sector they're in. Work out what, what insights you can glean from them and then apply to your business. You know, An example, if you've got a, uh, you know, an online retail business, have a look at a site called revzilla.com in the US. They do a fantastic job on marketing motorcycle gear. Um, and uh, they don't sell motorbikes. They just sell all the gear that goes, goes with them. They do a fantastic job on the way they structure their products, um, the, the reviews they do, they do video reviews of everything. It's really clever, really, really clever what they do. And, you know, don't blindly copy what, what people do, but, but look at the concepts that, that work and will work for you and your target market. Modify and adapt them to meet the unique needs of your, your business. So being innovative and developing clear strategies, I think is a really important part of, of what we do. It, it's what, a lot of what I do with clients, making sure we're clear, really clear in our strategy and we have got a business that differentiates itself. All right, my fourth tip, build a clear plan for 2020. The number of people that have these plan, that have a plan stored in their head um, is just crazy. So just take the time to write a plan and write it down. Now we all know why writing, by, by while having a plan, your head's a dumb idea because um, it changes over time. Yeah, so it morphs. Um, we think it stays the same, but it doesn't. We morph it. So, and and the mere act of taking the time to write it down um, is a really powerful process for it because it makes you actually pull your thoughts together um, and get them absolutely clear and make sure that they link and work together. Whereas in your head, you can make all these rough calculations on how how they link. So, what am I talking about? I'm going to talk about a plan. Um, I'm talking we need to cascade our plan. So, so we should have a strategic plan for our business that, you know, it, you know, goes from three to five years. So that's that sort of rough time frame. probably three in the current environment, but, but you may want to stretch it to five. So what's a, you know, just think about the strategic plan. We need to have a simple strategic plan. I'm not talking about a phone book. I'm talking about a really simple strategic plan that maps out the key components of where you're heading in your business, the big ticket items. It doesn't have action plans out to three years or five years where you you know, mapping in there, we're going to finish this little project in September 2025 because we know how quickly the environment changes. So it's got the big rocks, big picture items and that sort of stuff in it. Um, but you've got some clarity around when you're heading for three to five years, make it a short, sharp plan that you can update quickly and, um, 
uh, and it becomes a dynamic plan, something for you to use in your business. But, but the really important thing is then to sit down and say, okay, if that's where I want to be in three to five years, what do I need to do in the next 12 months? Right? So we're going to have a long-term strategy we're working to then where do we need to be in the next 12 months and map out that annual plan. And I've got, I've got models for these things. Um, strategic plan. I'm happy to help you with a strategic plan if you, if, if you need some help in that space, but there's plenty of good models around that um, and some good resources on, on the website. Um, but the annual planning stuff, you know, there's some really good videos and templates that we've given you previous, previous webinars around that. And then we cascade that down to 90 days. So if that's, we're going to be in 12 months, what do we do in the next 90 days and get some, I guess some, some granularity into your plans and get it to the point. Now, none of these plans are big, you know, documents that go on forever. So here's the, the annual operating plan model that, that I use. Um, as I said, we've got videos and templates on this and we'll put the links in that to the, to the show notes for this webinar. But basically, you know, you want to work on the now where our principle and we just want to go, you know, what are some of the key issues where we are now? Where would we like to be at the end of 12 months? What are the three or four big rocks? You know, the, the big things that we must do in the year. So these are the real must do things. And it's not fix our website. It's actually, you know, develop a comprehensive marketing strategy or grow our market share or double our sales or something like that. Right. And then it might be, you know, improve our operational efficiency and it might be engage our team could be the three big rocks, write a description of what they are, what they really mean to you. And then what are the key, any, are there any key measures that relate to each of those big rocks? We then drop down for each big rock. We develop some strategies. We develop some actions to, to actually put each of those strategies in place. But remember these are higher order actions because you know, over 12 months, who's responsible and when are they going to get done by? And then importantly, what resources, people, capital, additional resources, people and capital will we need over and above what we currently expect in order to execute on these strategies and these big rocks to make them happen? Because often we don't do that level of planning. A really simple plan. It's a one page and it's something that can really drive it for you. And then we've got a similar model and that sits under that and drops down into a 90 day plan. All right. So really happy to share that information with you um, and and um, really suggest that, that you take the time to just to sit down and do an annual op operating plan. So it will take you, you know, 30 minutes and to an hour at the most. Um, it depends on where your thinking is. Um, I've got clients we've worked through, we've worked through this plan and we've got it up and away in less than 30, 30 minutes because we're, we're really clear on where we're heading and therefore, you know, it, 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 it runs for us. But, um, and then if you've got a larger business, you can, you can actually have a, an over annual operating plan for the whole business. And then you can cascade that down. You could have an annual operating plan for the sales team, the marketing team, the operations team, the, you know, the administration and finance team, um, however your business is structured. Okay. So, develop an annual plan think about change success right so when you've got your plan it's really important that you run something like the change success diagnostic over, over the top of it so so develop your annual plan and then jump onto the website and go to the change success diagnostic fill it out and go um because it will give you some insights into into the factors that you need to focus on in order to be successful all right. In order to be successful in making the changes that this plan is going to be on, and it looks at three key areas: you know, readiness, capability, and beliefs. Yeah, um, this is based on the PhD thesis of Dr. Chris Mason, who's, who's my business coach, um, and and Chris has put a lot of time and and I think eight years of his life in, into this model. It's extremely powerful, and it, it just focuses you on the things that are really important. So yeah, just don't do the plan. Take, take an extra 10 minutes to run the change success diagnostic over it. Um, again, it's all conf confidential and you're not giving away anything commercial um, about you or your business in completing that online. My fifth tip is once you've got the plan, make sure that you take some time for you. So I'm finding that we've got more and more pressure um, on ourselves um, you know, this fast changing, you know, VUCA environments, volatile, uncertain, complex and ambiguous environments that we currently work in um, are really taking a toll on people. And it's really important that, that if you're going to lead your business to success and be successful in your life, then you make sure that you, you need to look after yourself and that's mentally and, and physically. And I'm finding that, that mental health issues are becoming far more prominent right through our communities. 
um, right through through and you know, from our children right through to to business owners we're putting ourselves under more and more pressure um, sometimes that pressure is not coming from work it's coming from from our home environments but it's really important that we we acknowledge it so the first thing is take care of your mental health understand that the pressures perceived and real that they pervade all aspects of our life and impact us all I'm finding people saying to me, oh, yeah, I, I can, uh, you know, there's stuff going on at home, but, you know, I can block it out and don't bring it to work. It's just rubbish. You can't. Um, and lots of people um, are bringing it to work whether they think they are or not. I'm finding that mental health is a critical component of business success, so take the time to address it. Um, I do. Um, I, I use, uh, I get some counselling. I use, I've used hypnosis for probably the last uh, the last decade um, as a way of just maintaining a positive mental focus and everything else. Get some training in things that you need to do. Understand your personal stresses and trigger points and develop strategies that stop them blossoming into larger issues, all right? And consider taking a practice that make you more mindful and balanced, you know? yoga, martial arts, meditation, whatever it is, you know, um, six stubbies and a bottle of red wine every night is not what I'm talking about. That just masks, masks our, 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 our health issues. Um, and not say it's not pleasurable, but, um, but it's not what I'm ta- talking about. All right. And, and I think thinking about having a balanced, fulfilling life away from work and there is time for you is really, really important. Um, so let's just think a little bit about, about that along the way. Um, Part of this is setting realistic targets and goals for the next 12 months. I'm not suggesting that you don't send, uh, set ambitious targets, but make sure that they are realistic and achievable and that you've got this achievable, sorry, with the skills, capabilities and resources that you have available. So I'm finding too many people are setting targets that are just not achievable. Sure, they're stretch targets, but if we look at the, the capability that, w- that we have within our business, um, we, we often just we're just not going to get there and so therefore we're setting ourselves up for failure you know um you know and and the other thing is remember they're just targets and goals so you know i've had clients that have gone within 10 percent of of a major stretch target so we set a we set a target which we we thought was a pretty good target then they put a stretch target above that for some bizarre reason and they went within 10 percent of the stretch target and then beat themselves up because they didn't make the stretch target when the original target was an ambitious task in the first place so be realistic you know, don't put yourself under the pressure that, that you need to be. Set some great targets, focus on them, but don't beat yourself up too hard if you're setting big stretch targets and, and you're not and you're not getting there. So realistic targets are, are probably pretty pretty critical for me. Find something for you. This uh, background photo here is a photo of my of my girlfriend um, and um, Suzuki 1250, a GSX 1250. Um, I go motorbike riding. It's my sort of Zen activity. Um, you know, I do 30,000 Ks a year on it. Um, I make sure I get, you know, one decent two to 300 K ride in every week. I'm not a commuting. I take a day off and go for a ride for me. Um, I find I'm just as productive um, and my revenues improve despite me to working less hours in the week because, you know, often present is not necessarily productive. So, so find an activity for you. You don't have to take time off in the week to do it, but find something that's for you, something that, that makes you happy, makes you smile and, and gives you a spring in your step. Yeah. And, um, and for you, for everybody that, that tip will, that sort of thing will be, will be something really, really different. Um, but you've got to find something that works for you. Um, I think it's a really important part of staying mentally strong and, and powerful in, in your business um, and just being um, you know, a better manager, better, a better, you know, spouse, parent, all those other things. Um, so find something for you really, really critical. Okay. Rushing through this a little bit, but I guess at the um, the big summary for me, the big takeaway with this is just take the time, take the time to stop, prop, and just 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 sit back for a minute and relax and think about the business for the year. You know, just think about what's coming, build a plan for 2020, use our annual operating plan template, map out a, an AOP for your business. I, you know, I know only a few of you will do this, but um, you know it's something that I do. Um, I do regularly. So I've mapped out my AOP for my business. Um, and I sit down and, and think about it, you know, and this webinar is actually one of the things that dropped out of it. It's one of the things that uh, I said, I used to do lots of webinars and I've really dropped off and now I'm going to start doing webinars. So one of the first things I did was, was, was punch out a webinar it was one of one of the strategies for marketing and growing my business. All right. So that's the, I guess my big summary. 
next steps, you know, uh, from, from today, um, I suppose we could stop and pause for some questions. So if has anybody got any, any questions, if you've got a question, just type it into the Q and a area. There's a, a Q and a area there. Um, but just type something into the, in. if you've got a question at all, just plug it in the, in the question. I'm really happy to, happy to answer it. Um, we'll just stop and prop for a second. If anybody's got any questions about what we've run through. Okay, nothing there at the moment. So um, then let's just let's just quickly do a little bit of a wrap up. So where to next? So so for me, um, one of the really important things here is that that take the time to review the webinar. So what we'll do is we'll send you out a a um, a, a copy of the recording. So I we'll send you out a link to the recording. There'll be a heap of resources that that are attached to it. Um, um, and the resources that we picked up in the blog article and what I've talked about here, there's, so there'll be links to, you know, some of the resources we've talked about to the diagnostics, to all those sorts of things. Just take the time to review it. Um, if anything, just fill out that one, one page plan. It'd be, be really, really important that, that you do that. Yep. Uh, anyway, here we go here. Um, yeah. So, um, I've got a question here from, uh, from, from your landy. Um, so you're all great to see you. I uh, hope you're well. So just what virtual assistants am I using at present to help facilitate action? Um, I've had, uh, I've had up until recently, um, two virtual assistants, but I know I, I'm, one was a full-time web developer. Um, and, but at the moment I've just got uh, Ray who's um, probably online with us. Ray's, um, simply amazing. So Ray and I've been working together for the best part of 10 years. Um, and Ray is based in the Philippines, and she is just fabulous. Um, there's plenty of articles on the on the website again about how to find a VA and how to how to get the best out of them. Um, I think it's more a case of Ray getting the best out of me. So, um, but yeah, no, I'd, I'd highly recommend having somebody to support you. Now, whether they're a virtual assistant in Australia, in the Philippines, in the UK, wherever you, wherever you want, it doesn't matter. Um, the benefit of having a virtual assistant is you don't have to worry about office space and equipment and all those sorts of things, they can take care of that. And with, you know, Zoom and um, lots of other products, there's, there's virtually no need for you to be in the same room as anybody anymore. Um, so, yeah. So I hope that answers your question, y'all. Uh, yeah. Yeah. Yeah, sure. Um, yeah, Bill, certainly I'll be able to give you a hand, hand with that. Um, yeah, definitely. Um, we'll step through that, that AOP and change success process without any trouble, trouble at all. Um, that's going to go, that'll be easy McPeasy. Yeah. Um, yeah, cool. That'd be good. Yeah. Y'all that'd be great. Love to catch up with a coffee. That'd be really good. So make sure you review the webinar. I guess the next thing is here, heap of free resources on my website. So, so we put them up there for a reason. If you go to shift, you'll find there's a whole heap of re free resources from the 90 day contact, um, program template, which is a must do in my opinion for every business. If you don't have a 90 day contact program operating in your business, then, then you're really missing out on something important. Um, there's a template there that, that you can download that'll step you through the whole process. Cannot emphasize enough the importance of doing that. We've got also got a free, um, uh, digital marketing course. Um, yeah. Um, and, um, Sorry, there's a free digital marketing course for you to go there. There's also, um, um, I, I guess, a whole heap of um, videos. There's webinars. There's blog articles. Lots of the videos, blogs, and webinars have templates attached to them. Um, so there's a heap of information there. We've got diagnostics. We've got a whole heap of stuff going on there. So just jump onto the website, use those resources, um, and really uh, um, use them with my blessing. Um, really, and if you've got any problems with any of them, just flip me an email and we'll, we'll help you work out how to, um, how to, how to make the best of those. Yeah. Um, now, oh, then the other thing you can do is book a 20 minute call with me. I'm really happy at no charge to have a quick 20 minute chat with you about, about any issue you've got going in your business and just set you in, in on, on the right direction. So really happy to do that. There's a calendar link there. It takes you to my diary. You're welcome to, to, um, um, find a time that suits you. So it'll be a mutually um, um, beneficial time. Um, and uh, we'll just 
have a chat. Let, let me know the topic you want to talk about and the things you want to discuss. And I'm really happy to spend that, that 20 minutes with you, point you in the right direction and, and get you started um, moving to where you want to go. So please take me up on that. Absolutely no cost, no hard sell, um, nothing. All right. So just some, just a good, yeah, good chat um, and some advice. The other thing we do do is a couple of years ago, we ran a 30 day um, challenge program, um, which was, which a number of people really enjoyed um, quite, quite a simple day, uh, quite a simple process. Sorry. Um, it, it runs for 30 days. We'll give it a little bit longer to finish stuff if you want to, but notionally for 30 days, there are basically 10 online models that take step you through the process of building a really strong plan for 2020. Um, we've got a couple of bonus modules in there on different things. Um, we'd have weekly group coaching calls. So we'd, we'd log on once a week. We will log onto the, onto zoom and we have a chat. Um, you can ask me questions and we can address those questions as you go through the training. Uh, for those of you who come on board, we'd start with an initial 30 minute onboarding call. So we'd have a, a, a call to get things started, to kick you into gear, set you on, on the right on the right track. And then at the end of it, a, a simple wrap-up call with you uh, as well to make that happen. Um, all up investment, 500 bucks plus GST. Um, and um, if, you're if you're interested, uh, please let, let me know. You can put something into the chat or the Q&A right now and I'll, and I'll follow up with you if you're interested in taking me up on, on that offer. Um, but the people who went through it last time said it was, uh, it was a really useful process because it, it forced them to, talk, to move through the stuff that we talked about in, in this webinar. So, um, but um, yeah, and we'll put some, some links into the, uh, into the show notes and stuff so you can... Um, um, so you can follow follow on that if if you want to, yeah, okay. So that's about it. So thank you very much for for coming along today. Thanks for being here. Um, love to get your feedback on 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 on, on the day. Um, and um and let and let and let me know what your what 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 your thoughts are. Um, love to know of any topics going forward that you'd love us to cover off in a webinar. It's always to get some good feedback from from people on um on that on the topics that lay, they'd love to have in a webinar and um and we'll go from there okay so um if you want to stay on and have a little chat about um about uh um the 30-day challenge or anything else really just jump on board and start part some start pumping some questions into the online or the chat area which a number of you've done but otherwise we will we'll catch you again soon we'll rub another another webinar in four to six weeks and hopefully we'll get you along and uh, we can add some value to you so have a great day i hope you're getting lots of rain and breaking that drought and um, look forward to catching up with some of you soon thanks very much all right